The opportunities of emerging markets are, are real, long-term in nature, and very different now than, say, the developed markets of the world. If you go around all of the OECD member countries, every single one has a problem in infrastructure. With infrastructure now being such a critical topic on everyone's agenda, in a way the research and the, and the academic thinking is, is actually still behind. Today the single biggest challenge continues to be getting projects forward. It's the challenge that governments face in planning, in uh, prioritizing potential infrastructure investments, uh, the detailed sectoral reform work to get those uh, forward, and then the detailed project structuring to get these things to market. If many governments succeed in what they're now trying to do, then the problem will become capital. Uh, but it's not that yet. There's a lack of pipeline of products, and that's, that's certainly the, the, the big sort of macro issue is the number one elephant in the corner, if you like, that has to be addressed. Another issue is linking the infrastructure investment facility itself with what you expect in terms of economic development. If you're the infrastructure investor, getting some benefit of the economic growth that comes with the investment process. And at the same time, if you're government trying to sponsor economic growth, ensuring that the investor understands that other objective. The challenge is one of decision-making under uncertainty for complex systems. What worries me is the uh, amount of commitment being locked in now in infrastructure systems, which may not be fit for purpose for the future. There's all these new models emerging, the new models of public-private collaboration, the emergence of the need to to combine the thinking of climate finance with infrastructure finance, the role of brokers, you know, with the World Economic Forum plays a broker, what's their role? So I think there is a gap in the academic world to keep up and even lead the next phase of thinking that has to happen to resolve the challenges of infrastructure. I think there's a real space there for us to contribute thinking methodology in order to improve decisions, to have decisions which yield better returns, that deliver better services for people, that are more benign with respect to the environment. It's important to learn this is a wheel you never get off and to manage public expectations and political expectations about how much is promised versus how much can be delivered. Oxford is, of course, a global university. We can bring to the university a range of people and a range of issues that few other universities in the world can deal with. What we are finding is in this space, information is extremely imperfect. Um, so this is why the World Bank, for example, has set up the Global Infrastructure Facility, um, which is convening as a way to try and bring information uh, together. But this is where I think uh, academic-based institutions uh, may be able to play a role that they haven't seen or haven't been interested in uh, in infrastructure before. To be on the leading edge, cutting edge thought on the academic side is obviously where Oxford can then bring the other parties in uh, to see how that can practically be applied. Well, it's been a fantastic workshop and there's a very interesting cross-section of people um, that have been brought together here. The speakers, the particular speakers, were really insightful and, and offered something that actually we don't often see. That type of model should be the basis for the next couple of events that we do in this area. One could envisage a number of things from bringing in, say, a number of uh, UK or European institutional investors, having more of a dialogue there, or having a sector focus such as, you know, what are uh, what are the implications of the evolving dynamics of energy across emerging markets? Another topic that might be considered is an issue raised but quietly forgotten. That is, infrastructure almost always is of value to the public. What's the public voice in investing in infrastructure? What role does the public place in holding infrastructure providers, if they're private, to account? That's a very interesting question.